going into turn four with our updated resource totals here at the bottom of your screen. We once again see that Lightning is in a position where he could go to tier two as early as turn four. Um, no one else in that position. Sand looking to recapture some of that aggression that he instigated in the first few turns. Let's see what he does with turn four. He constructs a mine on his mountain. Bring him to nine and five. This is general to the field. And goes ahead and purchases that. Finally obtaining his first defensive fortification on that desert. Putting him to four and zero. And he spends three extra food to get one soldier out there. Just to help help that defense there a little bit. Poisons at turn four. His general can place a free barracks down on the tile that he's currently on. Could could be the initiation of an attack over this defensive fortification here. So he moves the general into the lake to purchase it and does place his free barracks there. He activates the marketplace advantage card, incredibly powerful card that allows him to exchange 10 of his building materials for 10 food. And he activates another advantage card that allows him to purchase an army at a discounted price of just 12 food. On that lake that he just had the barracks placed upon, which is ample opportunity to attack this field, this forest tire right in front of him. Huge swing. Poison definitely taking advantage of the window here. He spent all 12 of his food to get that army, so he is at 0 and 1. Not much else he can do. Earth player here. All that action going on the east coast, it just means it's resources not thrown in my direction. Pretty easy move here. Probably not even going to buy soldiers. Move to the rainforest. Purchase that. Purchasing a couple more uh, defensive fortifications, we go to 1 and 9. Any making the correct move here. Moving his general into the mountain and purchasing that, putting him to 12 and 5. Purchases one soldier, 9 and 5. He's going to have a lot of food coming in and a pretty healthy amount of building materials. Paying for four buildings this turn, though. He's still going to be netting positive, which is all he needs. All he needs to be is in the green so that he can um, keep expanding and purchasing new tiles. And that's it. We're going to the end of turn four. That was an incredibly fast one. If we just look at the positioning right here, remember that Lightning does have that ability where he can attack from two tiles away. The Sand player definitely needs to heed caution here. This general, very powerful. If he does pop to tier two in this next turn, he gains a lot of extra bonuses that will help him in this aggression. So let's see if the Sand player looks out for it. He needs to potentially look away from over here, but he's getting pressed on both sides, it would appear. So... Let's update the resource total. And the weather event is Avalanche, cutting all resource production from mountains this turn. Hugely detrimental to our Lightning player. Uh, it doesn't necessarily stall the aggression that he's going to do if he is going to pop that two-tile attack this turn. But he's not necessarily going to be able to fortify it at the end of the turn because then he might go into the red with building materials. Sand a little affected by the weather. Has that one mountain purchased. Purchases three soldiers here. Goes to three and eight. Moves his general up to the front lines as well. Sand is initiating an attack on this lake tile right here. I love this blow for blow uh, type of combat that we experience in these games sometimes. Sand is saying, sure, you might take some of my land, but I am certainly going to take some of your land. And if we see who gets the advantage here, it's really almost a dead even tie because... Poison is going to take a tile that is two tiles away from Sand, but Sand is taking a tile that is two tiles away from Poison's capital. Not much defense is here, and then Sand, of course, no defense is here. Let's see what happens. This is spicy stuff. It is a base race, ladies and gentlemen. Sand rolls in a six for their soldiers, and that is enough to cancel out any defense that uh, Poison was going to mount there. No advantage cards were played in this battle. And so... Poison does lose that lake. They're already pretty low on resources, and that's going to cut their food production at the end of this turn. Sand does have enough to fortify it. Let's see if they do. I would definitely fortify here. You have to, I, I mean, at least just one, just one. Maybe put a, two fortifications on the desert back behind before you attack, but he already didn't do that. Probably is what he should have done. Uh, surprising that he also didn't pop the Rattlesnakes card here, uh, which would stall the aggression that this army is imposing here, and it would then force the Sand, or it would then allow Sand to win the base race here. 
assuming that they're both just attacking, attacking, not fortifying here. If Sand pops a Rattlesnake's card here, then this army has nowhere to attack confidently, especially if they put a defensive fortification on this lake tile here. But he doesn't pop it, so let's see what he's planning. Poison sitting at 8 and 8. Sand opted to not fortify the tile that he just claimed. Poison weighing his options to attack this near-naked desert tile. It does have a defensive fortification here. He only has to roll a 2 or higher to win. So it's a 5 out of 6 shot. So the Sand player wishing he played the Rattlesnakes card here. Even mentioning it at the table. But what's so strange about this play, and I think Poison's just getting super ahead of himself here doesn't purchase anything before attacking his turn is over the only thing he can do is he can fortify this desert which if you're not going to do anything else with your turn i'd recommend it to just maintain your foothold in his land but you gotta make a play before you attack poison does end his turn as there is nothing else he can do he doesn't see too much too much merits of of uh, fortifying this as he doesn't see sand being able to mount a, a any opposing attack that is, you know, worth sniffing at. This is an aggressive move, taking this field just a few tiles away, moving into Lightning's territory here, purchasing it, putting me at 5 and 17. Lots of building materials to work with here, putting a couple more uh, defensive fortifications on there. And now, since we're in a position where we can attack uh, what... I, as the Earth player, am thinking here is we can potentially pop our play tectonics ability next turn, depending on where lightning moves in response to us here. But if we pop play tectonics, we can take a lot of his land here, and we can definitely pose a threat to his capital here. So I'm going to build resource buildings here on my food generating tiles so that I can have extra resources to purchase soldiers next turn. So purchasing a resource building for this field and this lake puts me to five and seven. Go ahead and also purchase it on the Rainforest as well. Lightning goes ahead and pops to Tier 2, putting them at 14 and 0. I think this is a this, this is a strange play to make as well. Now, being a new player maybe doesn't see the potential for plate tectonics on his border, but also not being able to fortify land that you're going to take. Let's We, we already suggested that he is potentially going to utilize that two-tile attack ability in this turn right here on the northern coast. He wouldn't even be able to fortify it. Maybe he's just understanding the sand is in a broke position where he simply can't defend all of his you know claims on this land, which that's understandable. Um but it's definitely good to fortify. If not fortifying over here, to fortify me from claiming what you have worked to claim so far in this game. Because I have no threat coming at me. Lightning is feeling the uh, the effects of Avalanche even harder because the only building materials he's producing are coming from that mountain. Take that away, he's at a negative. Because of Avalanche, he's actually at a negative building material net this turn. He will have to destroy one of his buildings this turn. Ops to go for the negative... He is at Tier 2, and with 14 food and his Tier 2 General passive, he can train soldiers on his General at a discounted price. Shocking development. Very, very powerful. Trains three soldiers, putting him to 8 and 0. And he does activate his Tier 1 card faster than, well, you know the rest, allowing him to move two tiles with his General and attack. And with Sand sitting naked here, there's no defense there to be had. Lightning is certainly striking just next door to the heart of the Sand Nation here. Because Lightning is at a negative one, at the end of this turn, he does have to remove a building. Maybe he, he just wanted to guarantee his claim here, but the general attacking a naked tile, he still would have won even without purchasing, purchasing the soldiers. And he still could have gone tier two the following turn. If he fortifies his land here, then my, my ability to access his land next turn is much more difficult. If he puts a defensive fortification on each tile here, then the only one that I really have an opportunity to play tectonics at is his mountain. Which is something that I would certainly consider doing because it's one of his few building materials that he's getting per turn. If I take this tile the turn after Avalanche is uh, activated, then he's going to be at a loss for building materials and he is going to struggle to uh, progress in the game. That being said, he's 
at the doorstep of a nation he's about to eliminate. So does he care that much? I do think he should have held on to Tier 1, fortified his own land, and then still pressed with the general. So he takes off his uh, economic building on this lake, and he goes to 24-0. and zero. So looking at this crucial turn 6, we already have someone on death's door here. Sand City get 13 and 10. Definitely has resources to work with to defend his capital. Uh, he could also activate his Rattlesnakes card here. Um, it, if the capital does have a Stalwart defense on it, then Lightning is simply going to try to pick apart at the other land uh, tiles that Sand owns, which would be this desert. Um, still staying, you know, one tile away from home. Here's the issue with this, though, is... It allows Poison to access this field, which obviously is not included in the Rattlesnake's effect, and then Poison would actually get to attack before Lightning, and Poison would get the kill on Sand. So this is a race for who gets this win condition, uh, killing the Sand player here. But he does have some resources to work with, so let's see what he does. And the weather of it is Termites. This is a heartbreaking blow to the Sand player. Termites removes half of all building materials from every player. And it does round down, as is the rule in this game. Sand goes to 5. Poison goes to 7. And Earth and Lightning... Or, sorry, Earth goes to 4 and Lightning stays at 0. Lightning feeling no effects here. But Sand's potential for defenses cut in half. Brutal for his ability to stay in this game. There's not too many decisions to be made here with his resources, though. You obviously are just going to defend your home and hope to fight another day. Um, maybe a great weather event comes along. Sand desperately hoping for a miracle advantage card here. And it is a miracle advantage card from this vantage point, allowing him to place a defensive fortification on a tile that doesn't currently have one. The Earth Nation also gets to do this, so I also experience a benefit from this. And it is poetic, it's in the script. This capital tile is going to get a free defensive fortification, and then he can then purchase another one, where originally he was only able to purchase one. Really a godsend advantage card. Purchases that last defensive fortification at home. Putting him in 13-2. Trains three soldiers. Putting him to 4-2. and two. He activates rattlesnakes. Good play here. Because if Lightning doesn't feel confident in attacking here then the only tile that they can take is moving away from their capital tile unless he wants to lose his army at the desert. And his general attacks from that lake at the swamp, because it just has a barracks, no defensive fortifications on this, the general does win this. Um, I don't think there's you know anything wrong with this. He could have just as easily taken the mountain. The merits of taking the mountain uh, is that he can't get these soldiers here to this tile uh, well, these soldiers can counter and attack this tile, but they can't counter and attack this mountain tile. Maybe he's thinking I'm cutting off the benefit of the swamp to the poison nation, but that's not your concern here, right? Poison can still march in and attack this field if they wanted to, right? The sw swamp or not, it doesn't matter. I personally would attack the mountain here. And puts all of his forces that he has on that lake into the swamp. He's going all in for this potential escape. Because if he does live one more turn, he can then attack Poison, killing him, which would give him access to another capital tile, keeping him in the game. Poison at 9 and 7. A few decisions here. No swamp bonus for him. Poison builds two defensive fortifications at the capital, which this is enough to thwart. This is probably enough to thwart the sand incursion here. We've got three soldiers and a general, it appears. With no offensive bonuses for the Sand Nation. Uh, Poison even has their general here. It's it's looking rough for a potential for a Sand attack next turn. He purchases three soldiers just to make sure. Poison goes to attack the lake. Without that swamp bonus, he does have to roll above a 1 to take it with three soldiers. Does successfully do so. Takes the lake. Sand on an island out here just one step away from salvation. Will he get it? We go to me, the Earth player, sitting at 20 and 4. Really wanted to go to Tier 2. Not able to do so. But plays we made here. Still only have the General at my disposal. Building a barracks on that forward field. Constructing, or building three soldiers here. Putting me to 11 and 1. 
and activate plate tectonics. Lots of options that we can uh, go with here. Um, and, and here's why I choose what I did. I shifted two fields where I could have, you know, shifted this field and this lake, which would put some of his land basically on my land for free taking later on in the game. But I'm going to move towards his mountain so that I can take one of his only resources for building materials and still be one tile away from his home. I'm not going to be able to cut all of his food supply here. And in the end, if I am going to be at his doorstep, then all of this land is going to be next to free for me anyway. With plate tectonics, we shift these two field tiles and everything on it. This doesn't count as those units movement. I can then attack. Lightning has no advantage cards to contest this. It is a naked tile. I do take it for free here. He has no building materials to defend in the following turn. He is, he's stuck. And so now Lightning finds themselves in a very interesting position. They won't be able to defend anything here. This is happening in the next turn. They have to win this capital tile here. They have to kill Sand in order to stay in the game. He activates Blitzkrieg Warfare, which has two effects here. He's going to place two barracks for free on one of his tiles, and the soldiers purchased from those barracks this turn only cost one food. Six soldiers for six food huge and then he can still utilize that shocking development passive to train three more soldiers at again a discounted price he has now trained nine soldiers for only 12 food yowza he goes ahead and activates the gain intel advantage card which is going to give him some insight into the sand player's hand there's no point in activating this card because you're attacking regardless. Just looking at their advantage cards is not going to change the fact on whether or not you're going to do it. So this is a, a useless activated card here. He then activates Thunderbolt, which removes both defensive fortifications from that capital tile that he was so fortunate to get. Power of Lightning in Tier 2. He's now looking at, this appears to be 13 soldiers and a general attacking 3 soldiers. These three soldiers do have an increase to their dice roll courtesy of these three deserts owned. However, this is a large force coming at them. But here is here is uh, perhaps a novice mistake here. Lightning is swinging with everything they got. But if, if you're truly playing to win, what we're not realizing here is that simply eliminating sand does not win you the game. Especially because you've got all this land over here that you're not really able to defend that Earth is looking like they're going to take. What you want to do is take free tiles where you can. This mountain tile has no defenses on it. Send your general there. Send all your soldiers at him. You'll win this fight, right? You will win this fight. So uh, I would take the free tile while we can. He Even if he wants to doubly make sure he has the Command Thunderstorm Tier 1 ability that will add two to all of his soldiers' dice roll in this attack. If he activates Command Thunderstorm, he can take the mountain for free, recouping the losses that he just had here, and still eliminate Sand from the game. Ops to not go for the Command Thunderstorm, and ops to throw every piece that he has at the Sand Capital just to make sure that he gets this victory here. Sand does roll a 5, which means his three soldiers are technically rolling an 8, courtesy of these three own deserts, which means he has a total defense of 29. That being said, Lightning with 13 soldiers and their general, they don't have to roll too high. Just a two will suffice. Lightning rolls a five. A very, very convincing win here. Um, but now, Sand wiped off the board. They have to clean their own tiles. They now fall neutral. Lightning does not automatically own them. But if you claim them by combat, you don't have to pay the price of owning them. That's the beauty of attacking tiles that someone else has already put the payment on. And so that's where it would have really, really helped if the uh, Lightning General claimed this mountain here. So Sand is eliminated here. We did find out that the Lightning player, as I said, my cousin, this is only his third time playing. Uh, and third game he's played in three days. So, you know, very, very quick. He thought he won the game. He thought by killing someone you win the game. But that's only one of your win conditions. He has to achieve another. Now, it's the hardest win condition to accomplish. There's a number of things he could do to win from here. But he threw everything he had at the sand capital. But now what? Is he in a convincing position? Let's see how he uh, maintains his good standing in the game. But Poison, 
breathing a sigh of relief that the one knocking on his door is gone. And so now uh, a really interesting dynamic here. We're at the end of turn six, and we have a player eliminated from the board, and yet a clear winner is, is not here. The three players still in the game can absolutely all still win. Lightning by far ahead here. But I was on the doorstep of killing the Lightning Nation. That was going to be one of my win conditions. That's gone now, unless I want to march all the way down the shore to eliminate him here as well because he's got two capitals. So my win condition is is gone right now. I'm at zero, and I don't really have my sight set on obtaining any anytime soon. At the end of this turn, as we're updating the resource totals, uh, Chandler, the poison player, activates the intercepting cargo advantage card, which takes five of my resources um, while they're being dispersed. I was at 26. I then go to 21, and those five food get added to Chandler's resources here. So he goes to six and seven. He's not making much poison. All of this bloodshed over in his corner of the board has resulted in the poison player owning one, two, three, four, five, six tiles alone. And only the field and his two forests are making him food. He's not making much food, yet he's got a significant amount of soldiers on the board to feed. Uh, so he's not profiting too much. Poison looking pretty poor here. And then, of course, our sand player wiped from the board. Take a look at that. Gone. Deceased. At the end of turn six, we have a lead. But will Lightning push forward to win this game? Will Poison make a comeback? Will Earth do something? Find out in the next part.